Hello, and thank you for joining us. We will be doing a presentation on reporting invasive species via the internet and smartphone. Before we begin, we'd like to take this opportunity to introduce our Indiana Invasives Initiative Regional Specialist Team with Southern Indiana Cooperative Invasives Management. Hi, everyone. I'm Amber Slaughterbeck. I am the Regional Specialist serving West Central Indiana, and my home office is based in Vigo County in Terre Haute, Indiana. And I would say that the plant that I like the least amount would be Japanese barberry. Hi everyone, I'm Erica Luchek. I'm the regional specialist in the Northwest part of the state. My office is out of Rensselaer in Jasper County. And my least favorite invasives are always varying from season to season, but I would say mine is teasel. Hi everyone, my name is Liz Yetter. I'm the regional specialist out in East Central Indiana. Um, I'm based in Richmond, Indiana, which is in Wayne County. My least favorite invasive plant is um, Oriental Bittersweet. Hi everybody, I'm Kayla Kinise, your regional specialist in the southern part of Indiana. It's that purple region there. My office is located in Paoli, Indiana, and my least favorite invasive is Winter Creeper. My name is Mary Wells. I am the regional specialist serving central Indiana. I'm based in Bloomington in Monroe County. My least favorite invasive species on a personal level would be Tree of Heaven. If uh, I had to think on my county level, I would definitely say Japanese stilt grass. So we will be going straight into our slideshow today to talk about reporting invasive species with EDMAPS and the Glutton app. Just tell you a little bit more about what these um, technology interfaces are for reporting invasives. The main um, system that we'll be using is EDMAPS or E-D-D-M-A-P-S. That means early detection and distribution mapping system. It's essentially an online mapping system for documenting invasive species and pest distribution. It offers real-time tracking of invasive species occurrences, local and national maps, electronic early detection reporting tools, a vast library of identification and management info. Uh, and this system was created by <clears throat> the Center for Invasive Species and Ecosystem Health down in University of Georgia. Particularly, we're gonna be using a regional network within that EDMAP system. That network is the Great Lakes Early Detection Network. And um, that's where we're getting the name for the application on the smartphone or smart device, which is Gledden. Uh, the Gledden network is a collaboration of various stakeholders across um, the Midwest and Great Lakes area. Why early detection? Um, this is a quote from the USDA National Invasive Species Information Center. Early detection and rapid response, also known as EDRR, can stop the spread of new and emerging invasives before they become established. And that's our biggest concern, because as you can see from this chart, the earlier um, you catch an invasion and the smaller the area infested, the lower the costs to control. Those costs are, also, are both monetary and human resource costs. So in order to even start working within the EDMAP system, you do have to go to the website, even if you are deciding to choose the smartphone to do your reporting. That website is specific to Indiana. It's www.eddmaps.org forward slash Indiana. There are a lot of online features. We will go through briefly some of them. Um, and then once you are in the system, you can explore other options as well. The online le features let you report sightings, access distribution maps, access specific species information. It offers 
a good deal of tools and training, and it also has a local or a personal interface so you can access your personal reports. We'll start first with distribution mapping <clears throat> or maps, or just accessing those. From that tab, you can actually come to your species in many ways, but I prefer to use the search bar. You can type in the common name or the scientific name and it will pull it up. And then from there, you just click on either the name or if you wanna see specifically which counties it's in, that's what I prefer. Um, I find that the most useful. So you can see here, it's highlighting green, any counties that have positive reports of the species, which is lesser celandine in this case, which is also very um, recently in bloom here in the United States. If you zoom in to our state, you can see more detail. Um, I have hovered over Hamilton County just to give an example. We'll also, well next let's talk about what kind of species information you can access on this website. Same kind of search menu, you enter in the species name and then go ahead and select the species, either common or scientific name. And it will pull up a screen with access to various information. If you were to scroll down, it would have a lot of information on identification and control. And um, you can also access images from the site, which is pretty handy if you're not sure what you're, if you have the right species to report. <clears throat> Before you can actually do any report sightings, you do need to log in. So the first thing you'll want to do is go up here in the upper right hand corner, select, select the little guy there and hit register. I won't go into too much detail. We've all registered for websites, so um, it's pretty simple to walk through there. Once you've created an account and a password, you're gonna go back up to here to the little guy in the corner and select login. <clears throat> so before you submit a report, there are some things you, there's some pieces of information you must have in order to submit. To go through those quickly, you need to know what, you need to know what species you are reporting, you need to know when, the date that you observed the species, you need to know where, the location of the sighting is essential. You can report via a point, a line, or a polygon. Polygon is far and away the most ideal way to report invasive species because um, it allows us to track the area. By doing these points or lines or polygons, this gives you the latitude or longitude of your site so that you don't have to figure this out on your own. Um, you need to take photos. Photos are a must. Um, at least four photos are recommended. Use quality photos. Um, since the verifiers need to review these um, in your report before it can be included in the database. Other info you can include, but is not required to submit, is area, growth stage, density, location, and habitat. So now we can go to the report sighting section. Start off by figuring out what kind of species you're reporting. In this case, lesser celandine is a plant. Um, it'll pull up a menu of locations. You're obviously in Indiana, so you're gonna wanna record Indiana. From there, you're gonna find the species name from the scroll down menu by typing in in that field. Um, there's a lot of information to include, but um, the ones in red are the areas that are required. So the date is essential, uh, the state and the county is essential, and then to the right, it has a small window for the uh, map where you're gonna report your sighting. Okay, so we're in a mapping system. Um, you can kind of use this hand tool to move around, but I pretty much zoomed in ahead of time on what I want to map. Uh, up here are these tools, um, point, line, polygon. When in doubt, use polygon. We have an infestation here in this area and on both sides of the trail. And I wanna show the area that the sighting 
of the species was encountered. So I will start by taking a dot point and clicking and then proceeding along the area. It doesn't have to be perfect um, and just kind of outlining the region that the various uh, infestations of lesser salandine were sighted. Okay, that's one polygon. There was another area on the other side of the trail that I wanna capture. It's not as big, but it's also spreading. Uh, I've been watching this site for a couple of years now. So we go back to the smaller screen and I'm gonna go ahead and go back to our, our, our slideshow. You can add information on the type of land ownership, even providing information on the location of the siding in case it's hard to find. And then down below here, you're going to see multiple areas to upload images. Taking pictures is essential. About 90% of our verification on this system is done remotely through photos. So you're going to want to take one photo of the entire plant or group of plants. Uh, two to three, providing close-ups with identification characteristics. So it's a top view, we've got a side view so we can see some of those other plant parts to be able to better identify even pictures of the roots if it's possible. And then and very important as well is the site at which you're finding this infestation just to give us a better idea of the level of coverage. <clears throat> So next up, we're going to talk about how to submit a report via the app that's associated with the EdMaps Indiana mapping system. Once you've downloaded the app, you have to log in. So you, like I said, you've already established your account. Um, you'll log in. You can go here to log in, and then it'll come back to this screen. To report a species, there's several ways to get to it, but we're going to start with the main top menu. You can also go down to all species and do a search or even save certain species to your list that you're commonly reporting. But for now, we'll start here. Um, you have to decide what type of species you're reporting again. It's not just the plant. We're actually reporting an herbaceous borb. From there, that screen will give you a list of all the herbaceous borbs within the Gledden app system and you can either proceed with your report or you can actually take a look at the information about that species by clicking on the eye icon to the right. If you click there, you will actually be able to see images, info, or even maps of the species in the Gledden network. To proceed with your report, you need to have your location services permitted for the Gledden app. So that'll be something you wanna make sure you do um, before you proceed with your report, just by going to your smartphone settings. From there, it'll pull up the screen. Um, if you go ahead and click on, let me go back really quickly. If you click on, instead of to the right, if you click on the actual name of the plant, it will take you to that reporting screen. Um, there's a lot of things you'll start with, but it's you can always start with a photo or, or multiple photos. You can take them from your library or you can take a picture from the app itself. Um, and then you're going to want to go ahead and do either your point location or like we've stressed, a polygon location. Other information you can include is time. How long did it take you to do this report? Uh, habitat and size in acres or square feet of the infestation, the density of the infestation, um, any notes about, again, landmarks or how to find the infestation, and then very important, oops, I'll go through these, save your work. <laughs> so once you're done saving it, you'll actually have an upload queue. Um, and once you're back on Wi-Fi, you can upload your report. Um, if you click on the upload queue, it'll take you to this screen. You're gonna want to then select the report to upload. You might have multiple at one time and just hit upload. 
you can even and um, you can even report unlisted species. There's some plants that aren't in the network system, especially on the app. Um, so you can go ahead and report them. And the only thing is you would need to do is make sure to include the species name, both common and scientific in the notes. So the My Ed Maps tab will give you a lot of access to information, but most importantly, it gives you access to your reports. So you can go back in and edit a report or even revisit it the next year to, to show how much your infestation has spread or how much your control efforts have succeeded. Your login to the EdMap system also gives you full access to the resources over at invasive.org and they are plentiful. So I highly recommend you check out this site. It has images, species information, et cetera. Um, special credit and thanks to the Center for Invasive Species and Ecosystem Health at the University of Georgia. For more info about them, go ahead and visit www.bugwood.org. If you do have questions, feel free to email me or call me or ask us on Facebook or other social media.